Hi everybody, welcome back to the Northwoods Family Channel. Doing a video here for you today that I've been eager to do for some time. We've gotten a lot of questions about the cameras we use on our side-by-side -side rides and how we film. So I'm gonna take a few minutes to show you what cameras we're using, how we set them up, and some tips for getting some cool footage out on the trails. First of all, full disclaimer here, we are not professional filmmakers. In the past, I dabbled filming some hunts here and there, fishing trips, things like that. But when we started this channel, that was really our first serious foray into filmmaking and video editing. So we've been learning things as we go, what works for us, how to make our footage better, and so forth. For cameras, our setup is relatively simple. We are mainly using GoPro action cameras to film everything. A Hero 9, a 360 Max, and we were using a Hero 8 as well. But I lost that last month when we were up pheasant hunting in northeast South Dakota. So if anyone up there is watching and you've come across a GoPro Hero 8, let me know. We use our phones occasionally, and we have a drone, of course, that we use for aerial footage that I'll get into in a little bit. We like the GoPros for a number of reasons. They're super small, lightweight, they're durable, and they take really good high-quality footage. Unless we're in lower light conditions, we do most of our filming in 4K, often at 60 frames per second. Lower light conditions, we'll bump it down to 2.7 or even 1080p and 30 frames per second. And of course, when we want to do ultra slow motion, we can film in 1080p at 240 frames per second. The GoPros have some really cool features, which are nice for when you're out on the trails. You can change how wide the lens is based on where you have the camera mounted or what kind of shot you want. And the hyper smooth image stabilization is just absolutely incredible. Obviously, when you're flying down the trails, it's a really bumpy ride. And with just a normal camera, the footage would pretty much be unwatchable. But with the image stabilization on the newer GoPros, the image is just buttery smooth. And nine times out of 10, I don't have to do any image stabilization on those shots post-production. It's really impressive. We'll use our iPhones from time to time, either in low light conditions. They take really good video actually when the light is dim much better than the GoPros. Or, you know, when we just need to take a quick shot of something and we don't want to grab a camera and take it off its mount. One mount that gets some really cool video on the trail is the lower bumper. When filming here, we adjust the camera so the horizon splits the frame in half. And we generally set the lens to one of the wider settings, usually what GoPro calls Super View. This provides a cool look at the trail itself, the surrounding terrain, trees, objects on the side of the trail, objects in the distance ahead, and really gives the viewer a cool sense of speed as you're going down the trail. I generally control the camera with the GoPro remote and I mount that on the steering wheel. So when I see a cool stretch of trail, I just press the button to record and press it again to stop. I can also hook it up to the app on my phone and even get a live preview of what the camera is seeing and control it from there. One thing to keep in mind with the camera up front or really anywhere that you're mounting it outside of your UTV is that it can get really dirty. So you can get some really cool shots, but you have to check it now and then. Obviously, if you don't check it often enough, you may find that you have hours of footage that are worthless because the lens was all covered in mud. Another location we mount the Hero 9 a lot is on our windshield. You can mount it on your dash. We mounted ours a little higher simply because we have an audio cable running out of our intercom system plugged into a GoPro audio adapter. This way we can record our intercom conversations directly onto the footage. We use an aftermarket battery door so we can close the door and run the plug into the side of the camera. As I said, you can also mount it on the dash. So long as you're not concerned with the camera getting wet or dirty or you, know, you have a windshield, you can run that same battery ported door and keep the camera plugged in the entire time so it's always charging and you don't have to worry about the batteries running out. The Hero 9 and the Hero 10 also have a feature called Hindsight. This is pretty cool. The camera's always running when you have Hindsight on. So when you hit the record button, it will jump back 30 seconds in time. Now it chews through battery a little faster, but of course if you have it plugged in, that's not a big deal. But this is great for when you're riding and you know you are concerned about capturing wildlife or some other unexpected things on the trail. You know, those moments when you think, oh man, that was cool, I wish we were recording that. Well now, you always are. You just have to hit the button and it'll go back and record 30 seconds before of what you otherwise would have missed. The 360 Max is a nice camera to mount on the dash too because it's got a forward and rear facing lens. You can use it in 180 degree mode and have it plugged in so the battery stays charged and you can flip between the front and rear cameras. 
The downside is that in 180 mode, you only get 1080p resolution. It doesn't have hindsight and you can't plug in an external mic with it. So some pros and cons of each of the cameras. That said, the 360 Max gives you some really cool options to take some incredibly cool footage because the camera is a 360 degree camera. You'll see some footage in our videos where it looks like the camera is floating along in front of the UTV as we're driving. These shots were taken by the 360 on an extended arm mount or on a selfie stick. As long as the arm itself is positioned directly underneath the camera body, the camera software edits out the arm where it stitches the front and the rear images together. So it looks like the camera is just floating out there, almost like it was a drone. Obviously, this is a really cool way to get some great panoramic views while still being able to see the machine or being able to introduce some movements into the shots, looking forward and then panning around the rear. This is all easily done in GoPro's free editing software, and then we'll export that and drop it into uh, Adobe Premiere Pro when it's all said and done. So I mentioned the front bumper mount, the dash mount, and the windshield mount. Aside from that, there are some different places we'll mount the camera for some cool shots, and honestly, it's just up to your imagination how creative you want to get. One of the shots I think is the coolest is sticking either the Hero 9 or the 360 on a selfie stick and then shoving it down near the tire. It provides a neat perspective. You get a really cool sense of movement and the ruggedness of the trail. When you're done with the 360, you can you know, get some really cool movement post-production and cool shots of the machine too. We'll use the selfie stick to hoist the 360 up above the machine too for those panoramic shots that we also want to show the general in. We'll use this bendable extension arm mount a lot. We clamp it into different places on the machine, looking over the driver's shoulder, looking back at the kids or anywhere else you can imagine. We'll clamp it facing rearward sometimes. Again, your only limitation is your creativity. One type of shot we've been trying to get more of in our videos is the external shots of the machine while driving. I think these are really cool because it showcases your entire machine in its environment, you know, doing its work. The downside of these shots is that someone has to get out and go set up a camera. So that means either dropping them off and backing up or having them run ahead and wait or setting down the camera, running back to the machine. You know, it kind of slows down the ride and can interrupt the flow of the drive. So they're really cool shots, but they do take more work to set up. For those kind of shots, Think about creating different angles. Try to get outside the normal perspective that we see our day-to-day -day world from. Changing your height above the terrain is a really good thing that you can do to just make things look a little bit cooler. Get low, get high. You can find cool objects in the background or foreground. Just try to be creative and try new things. Pay attention to the light. Usually having the light at your back is going to lead to better looking shots, but sometimes looking into the sun and catching some cool sun glare, you know, that can be pretty neat. The other way, of course, to get outside shots is by using a drone. We have two drones that we use. Both of them are from DJI. The first we started with was the Mavic Mini 2. It's an awesome little drone, very affordable. It's got a good camera. It's super small and light, so it's easy to pack along for a ride. Uh, we invest in some extra batteries and a rapid battery charger because it does burn through batteries pretty quickly. Eventually, we picked up an Air 2S, which is a little bigger, and this is what we use now for most of our filming. The Air 2S is faster, so it can keep up with our side-by-side. -side. I want to say it can do over 40 miles an hour. It can fly in higher winds, the camera's better, it has some automatic tracking features and obstacle avoidance sensors, which are nice, though none of that is foolproof, you still have to fly carefully. For drone footage, the trick is to set up your shot and then use smooth, continuous motion. Once you change the direction of the drone even a little, basically figure that the shot you were just filming is done. We'll use the drone in a static position sometimes to capture the general zipping by instead of getting out to set up a camera. And then of course, we'll use it for cool landscape shots. A shot that shows the horizon and surrounding landscape is generally gonna be more interesting than one that just shows the machine by itself in type. With just a little movement in the drone as you're flying too, it can create some really cool looking shots. Obviously driving and actively flying the drone, you need to have two people involved, the driver and the drone operator, and they need to be in communication. Finally, I would be doing a disservice if I didn't talk about battery charging on the trail. We picked up a bunch of aftermarket batteries off Amazon and a spare charger. For a heavy day of filming, I want to have at least four batteries with me for my main camera. One in the camera and three on the charger that we then plug into our 12 volt outlet. 
We have had no problems leaving our iPhones or these GoPro batteries on charging all night with the machine off. On our seven day Black Hills trip, aside from one time when I stopped to do some laundry and charge up my drone batteries, all of the charging was done off of our machine, either while riding during the day or while parked overnight. So those are the cameras we use, some of the accessories we use, and also some of the positions we mount the cameras in. We'll wrap up this video with just a few tips for filming that we've learned, mostly the hard way as we've embarked on this journey over the last year. The first tip I can give you is when you're filming, have a story in your mind that you want to tell. It may not turn out exactly as you're thinking, but if you have kind of an idea where you want your video to go, it's going to help a lot. and It's going to help you create the shots that you want to get. I've seen a lot of cool footage from the trails, but generally I think people enjoy videos more when there's a story that goes with it. Even in the coolest, neatest looking terrain on the most awesome trails, just watching riding videos can tend to get a little boring after a while. My second tip is be sure to take plenty of B-roll video, especially when you're starting off. You'll want that B-roll footage to fill the time in between when you're talking to the camera or to set to music when you're riding. When you start out, if you're like us, your first few videos you'll probably realize when you're trying to edit them that you should have taken more video. On the flip side, you may get to the point where you realize you don't need to take so much footage and you're just wading through tons and tons of footage trying to find the right clip. With time, you're going to start to recognize what are good shots, what you need to take, and what you can let go. My third tip is take long, smooth shots with your camera. Unless I'm following some action, I try to keep the camera pointed in one direction or make no more than one panning motion for at least 10 seconds. If it's worth turning your camera on to record, it's worth recording for at least 10 seconds. This will give you a much easier time when you're editing post-production. Nothing is worse than trying to watch a video where the camera pans left, then right, then back up, then down, and you're just bouncing the viewer back and forth across the screen like it's a ping pong ball. It's just not fun to watch. All right, my fourth tip is when you are talking with the camera, give yourself plenty of lead in time and lead out time. In other words, when you're done talking, just smile and look at the camera for another five seconds. Same thing before you start talking. Just stand there, look, and smile at the camera for five seconds without moving before you start. It's going to make your editing so much easier. And then number five, my final piece of advice is that you have to accept that whenever you are filming an activity, something is going to suffer a little. Either that's going to be the activity or the filming. You can't do both 100% all the time. Every time we have to launch the drone or set up a shot outside our machine or stop to change a camera battery, it interrupts the flow of our ride. So just understand that and find a balance that works for you. We've had days where the riding or the camping or the hunting or whatever we're doing is just too much. It's a little overwhelming. And when that happens, you know, we generally cut down on our footage or we only take the easy shots. Or sometimes we even turn off the camera completely. And we do that just so we can enjoy the moment as a family. You know, not everything you do is going to turn into a great video or frankly, even a usable video. The idea behind all of this for us is just to have fun as a family and to have some cool outdoor experiences that we'll remember. When we look back at our adventures, we really don't think, wow, that was an awesome video we made. We tend to think, wow, that was a really cool adventure or that was an incredible trip. So for us, when we have to choose which one to do better, the adventure or the filmmaking, we're going to choose the adventure every time. Well, that's it for our video on how we film our family adventures here on the Northwoods Family Channel. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment section below. Same if you do some filming yourself. Link your channel down there for us. We'd love to check it out, hear your ideas, and see how you do things. You know, we love watching other channels and seeing some cool creative ideas that other people have, and we hope people are doing the same with our channel. We always appreciate a thumbs up or a new subscriber, so if you enjoyed the video, click that button below and show your support. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you again next week.